The first step in the process was to clear the land. Now, I really didn't know anything here in the beginning. I mean, I, I'm literally online searching how to clear forest, how to clear land. Like, I didn't even know machines like this existed. This is called a bush hog. You know, I became a lot more familiar with machines and heavy equipment as time went on, but I'd never seen anything like this in action. This thing here is like a lawnmower for the woods. It was unstoppable. I mean, if you've got overgrown property, that you want to be somewhat usable but you don't want to take the trees down you should contract somebody to come in and do one of these things or if you've got the machine or access to it you know do it yourself because all of a sudden this property became walkable and usable um, you know prior to this guy coming in it was all sticks and thorns and bushes and it was crazy back there and then when he was done it was actually a usable space it was incredible And here's some pictures after he was done, and you can see just how much cleaner it is. I mean, here's my truck parked back there, you know, just kind of trying it out, figuring out where the barn might go. The guy with the bush hog also had a transit level with him, and so this was the beginning of discovering how much of a slope there was on my property. Now, I didn't realize how much of a big deal this was going to be in the beginning, but as you'll see, this becomes a problem later on. So at this point, I successfully got the neighbor's attention, and after assuring them I'm getting all the proper permits, the next step were to take down the trees where we're going to build the barn. Now this was a really hard decision because I had to figure out the orientation of the barn, how big it's going to be, and then ultimately I had to mark the trees that are going to come down. And it's hard to take trees down because they're big and they're beautiful and they make the forest what it is, but you know, it's a compromise. So we negotiated a price for them to move something like 25 trees and to grind up all the branches. It ended up being more work than the guy anticipated. So I think I ended up getting a pretty good deal, but these guys were here for multiple days and it was a big project. I also got a pretty sweet pile of wood chips out of the deal, which, you know, in hindsight, it was kind of more of a pain because I wasn't really ready for the chips, and I tried to spread them around as best I can, but they really were just in the way, and that was unfortunate because it was some nice material. And one other thing I would pick up on as time would go on is, and look at this machine, it says ABC Reynolds on the side. I mean, this guy was charging me to come in and do the work, but basically he was just going and renting the machine from a local rental place and then bringing it over and probably charging me triple for it. So I started to make those connections as time went on, and you'll see I end up buying a machine later on down the road of my own. So aside from heavy machinery, the other thing you really need on a project like this are some good friends that you can count on. My friend Wayne, who lived close by, had built a similar structure uh, a few years back and you know had a lot of good insight on the project and one of the things he suggested was he take some of the logs and mill the wood he belonged to a tractor club that runs an old sawmill on Wednesdays and they drink coffee and sit around and watch the wood go get milled and so he said hey let's bring the logs down there so we loaded up his trailer and we must have done I don't know probably five or six of these loads and you know the guys kept a lot of the wood for themselves which is fine they made like fence boards and stuff out of it but I did get a considerable pile of lumber out of the deal which I'm actually still working through right now so uh, that was a pretty sweet deal and here's a few more pictures of the property after it's been cleared now let me back this project up a little bit when we first moved into this house uh, we moved from my other shop which you know was like a two-car garage and I had a considerable amount of tools in there it was I used that space wisely I thought my wife and I decided from the beginning that the two-car garage that was in the house was going to be for our daily drivers only and that it would remain a clean space you know no painting grinding sanding that kind of thing so the first thing we had to do was find a place to keep all the stuff we thought about temporary structures and tents and things like that but 
we ultimately decided on buying a shed that we would eventually set down on the property. Now this thing, this is a Amish made shed that we just bought outright and had delivered to the house. And this guy brought on the trailer, had this mule machine and he just dropped it right in the driveway. And then eventually we called somebody back later on to have it moved down to the site. And my wife and I ended up having to build a pad for it, which I'll show you here in a second. But check this machine out. It's pretty cool the way he's able to just get it right off that deck and then bring it down and set it right down in the space. Here's another cool machine. This is basically the entire contents of my garage being delivered uh, to my house. And I wish I had video of this thing, but basically this thing picks that pod right off the truck and then he can four wheel steer it anywhere he wants and then just set it down. That was pretty impressive. All right, back to where we were with the project. So here's my wife and I building the shed pad that, that I'm a shed will eventually sit on. And this was a huge pain in the butt. I, this is my first time ever building any kind of retaining wall and it was all out of square and just kind of catawampus and, and of course the weather would swing from 5 degrees one day to 50 degrees the next day so that made for a challenge because the earth would be frozen but then you'd be sweating and it was interesting and also this was my first experience with getting materials delivered. Now this dump truck here is dropping off what's called RC6. That's recycled concrete. There's RC6, which is like a crushed run, more like a dust material, and then there's RC2, which is like these baseball size type rocks. And I'm going to talk more about that in a little bit, but basically it's junk. I mean, it's literally junk. It's a bunch of construction material all ground up and used as a base fill. I put this down on my driveway and ended up saving a couple bucks, I guess, but over the period of the next you know year and a half all i do is pick out garbage from it literally like piles of garbage here's a here's a pail full of stuff and this is just from like walking up and down the driveway a couple times so think twice about this material i kind of regret it uh now that i'm a little further down the road but the good news is you can always bury this stuff and our plan is to cover this with asphalt milling to make it look a little bit nicer once the shed pad was ready to receive the Amish shed from the driveway, we called up another company and came with a specialized trailer that could articulate left and right and pick the thing up. And so with a little bit of work, him and his partner were able to get the shed down to the pad and position it using some high lift jacks and some pipes. And with the shed being out of the driveway, I was finally able to pull my M37 out to see some daylight. Now this truck, you know, I'll do another video on this, but this is essentially the whole reason for building the barn. I've been working on this truck since probably about 2011, and it's been a frame-off restoration. I'll have another video on this truck at some point, because that's a whole other project. But there she is. Okay, let me talk about how important it is to have a machine that can lift and pick up materials and 
you know, help you along with this project because I was renting that Toro Dingo from a friend and it was incredible how much I was able to cover with that. It had the Harley rake, the bucket, the forks, and the excavator bucket. Uh, and that was great, but I didn't own the thing. And so one day I was driving down the road and I saw this for sale. Long story short, I own it and it's been amazingly helpful. Now, ownership of a machine has its problems as well. That is the hose I want. But of course, it's all the way on the bottom with all this stuff in the way. And so be prepared to spend a lot of time fixing hoses and changing fluids and learning all about hydraulics. But long story short, this would not be possible without some kind of piece of heavy equipment. And if you're going to go down this road, I would highly recommend investing in something like this uh, or, you know, a tractor with some kind of three point attachment on the back because you'll be really happy that you did. And if you can train your wife or your partner to run the thing for you so that you can do other work while they're running it, uh, that's bonus too. Here's my wife using the grappler while I cut stuff with a chainsaw. Excellent. With the weather breaking and the ground softening, it was time to start with the grading. Now, a lot of this was held up with the permitting process, which is a whole, I could probably make a whole nother video on that. But anyway, my buddy Joey and I decided to go for it together. I rented this machine, probably the same as any contractor would have this, I think it was a 13,000 pound excavator. You know, the company delivered it and he would run the excavator and I'd run the Bobcat and we essentially were removing a six foot slope from my property. Like I said, the grade was way more than we thought it was going to be. And then also in the process, we had to tear out a bunch of these stumps and, uh, and then we loaded them into this dumpster and then had them hauled away. And here's what the property looked like once it was leveled. At this point in the build, this pad seems to be level. We checked it with a transom level. Everything seems to be okay. And so I call up Pioneer Pole Building and say, great, let's get the pre-inspection. The guy comes out and he's got a clipboard and he's all official and he comes down and he looks at it and he goes, this looks great. And he doesn't measure anything. He just looks around and I say to him, hey, look, you know, I know it might be a little out of grade. You know, he might solve whatever I got to do to be ready for the build day. You just let me know. And he's like, nope, everything's good. I'm like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, oh, yeah, I've seen worse. This is no problem. We'll be fine. Great shape. Let's schedule your build day. OK, so we do that. Now, it's like a 10 week waiting period from that point. So I get my day and I wait. 10 weeks. Day finally comes for the delivery of the materials that they're going to use to build the barn. So here is the flatbed parked out on the street and then he's got this uh, forklift loader that's pretty neat because he can turn it <clears throat> 90 degrees in either direction so he can go forward and then he can go sideways and first he unloads the materials there on the front and then he unloads the trusses and sets everything down on site to be built. So the crew gets here, they unload a couple of things, and the first thing they do is pull out a transom level. And they shoot a level from one side of the property to the other and go, sorry, it's out of grade. And I said, what do you mean? The guy was out here. No, we can't build, it's too out of grade. And they start packing it up. I get on the phone with the company and here's their response. Well, it's the customer's responsibility to provide a level pad. Now, I get that, but why did you send your guy out here with a clipboard to tell me that it's level? I would have done everything I possibly could have done ahead of time to make sure that we were ready for this. But instead, I'm just sitting on my thumbs, waiting for the day, patiently, and then the day comes and the guys have to leave. And there they go. Thank you, Pioneer. I can't even tell you how disgusted I am with that company, Pioneer Pole Buildings. I should do a whole other video on how messed up their process is. For, you know, from, from the beginning of like just trying to reach out to them being like, hey, here's my money, I want to build a building. You know, you get somebody to come out here and the guy was nice, but I could, you know, for him, his whole goal was to get me to write a deposit check. Once they have that deposit check, good luck becoming any kind of a priority in their book. 
Oh, yes, Mr. Morgan, the whole way, fine. Yeah, oh, everything's going to be great. The day all this happened, things were really messy. I got into it hard with that company because they wanted to reschedule for a couple weeks out. And I said, absolutely not. I'm like, you're going to be back here tomorrow. Now, granted, I think the next day was Thanksgiving or something like that. So it ended up being the next day after. But I was like, you guys absolutely are ha you have to come back here. So really, I had no choice but to just get to work, call up the quarry. Luckily, it was still a work day and start having dirt delivered. I spend the entire rest of that day and into the evening having material delivered and trying my best to get it to be in grade so that they can build. This was super annoying because I had waited so long for this day, but I had some friends stop by and I had a lot of support and we got it done. So the day for the build finally comes. I think the next day was Thanksgiving and then, then this day happened. And so here they are in the morning. Uh, you know, they checked the grade, everything's good and we're back on track. So they're gonna start with this auger attachment on their skid steer and they're gonna drill down. I think they're gonna drill down about three feet uh, to make the footer holes for each one of the poles. So they drill all the holes first and then before they can do anything else I have to get an inspector from the county to look inside and say nice hole and then once we got the okay on that they were able to put the poles into the holes, square everything up, pour concrete into each one of the holes and then backfill. And just a side note, these guys worked their tails off, but they look like they were about, I don't know, 15 years old. Now, granted, I know I got a baby face and I look young even though I'm pushing 40, but <laughs> these guys were like, I swear I thought a bunch of teenagers were building my building. But like I said, they, the crew themselves knocked it out of the park. Pioneer Pole Buildings, the company that sold me the building and essentially you know, took the money and oversaw the project, not happy with them at all. You know, I, I recommend stay away from them. But the crew themselves, not actually from Pioneer Pole Buildings, a subcontractor, they worked really hard and they did a nice job. <laughs> Alright, skipping ahead here a little bit, uh, some of the footage got lost, but once they had the poles in place, they just kind of started framing around it. And before I knew it, they had the headers in place, and you could tell where the doors were going to be, and they had the girts in place that the metal panels would attach to, and then once they had that part up, they started bringing in the roof trusses. They had this pretty cool 
attachment for their skid steer, which was essentially just a really long aluminum pole, and one guy would drive the skid steer, and the other guy would help guide the hook onto the truss, and then walk it inside the structure, and then it would go up to the guy up in the roof, and then he would guide it into place, and then he would nail it in. Here's the executive producer of this project, the official check writer. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, it's looking great. Yeah. Who am I talking to? Us in 20 years. Oh boy. Drink water. That's all I can say. Yeah. Drink some water. Dad, what do you think? Thoughts? I'm thinking it's a long time coming, but it's finally here. Where, how come we didn't have a bar when we were younger? <laughs> we were too poor. Did you ever think this day would come? No, I didn't. Not no. with all the problems that you've had. No. What do you mean problems? Problems? A red stamp on a piece of paper holds up the whole project. Come on. I think it's come along well. Yeah. How does this compare to your your building and your 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 like your this barn will, and your? This will be up. This will be up in two days. Yeah. So my shed took three months. Yeah. It's all good.
with the structure in place, now we could start to focus on some of the other pressing issues. The first big issue was the grading. Now I'd got it enough to build the building, but there was still going to be a lot of problems with erosion. And so I needed to come up with a plan on how I was gonna keep the dirt from washing away from the building. And also there was this hill I had to cut into, and I felt if I left it, that eventually it would start to erode and some of the tree's roots would become exposed and potentially a tree would fall onto the barn. Plus it just wouldn't look all that great because we wanted to use this for some kind of an outdoor space. And we wanted to get the concrete floor poured. While I was trying to figure this out, my wife suggested that I send a video of the property to my all-time favorite YouTuber, Andrew Camerata. I mean, the guy is just my hero. And what really what amazes me is the guy works by himself, which I can totally identify with. Because I'm constantly out here hammering away at this stuff, usually just myself. So I figured, what the heck, I sent him a video. And to my surprise, he actually replied back and gave me some advice on what to do. Hey, Jared, Andrew Camerata here. Just watching your video here. So yeah, I'll, uh, I wrote something for you, but I figured it'd be easier just to handle this this way. So let's watch this here and talk about the stuff I would do. Is I would put down like a number two stone, we call it, or be like a three quarter inch gravel with no dust in it. That way the water can drain through it and it doesn't need the compaction. Is our six the right choice? Do I just go with fill dirt? Uh I probably wouldn't use dirt. I'd probably use gravel. You're, you, so you gotta be deeper down here, but that way the water can run all the way from the front of the building, or the side of the building, we should say, all the way through here. That's your goal. So I thought that was super cool, and uh, Andrew, thanks again for all your help and advice. After deliberating about it for a little while and, and debating whether it was something I could tackle, we ended up hiring a company because it just was too much work for one person to do, and honestly, it just was out of my wheelhouse. Clearly, I'm not very good at grading. I could barely get this to where it needed to be for them to build the building, and I wanted it done right the first time. But at least now I could talk intelligently to the contractor about what I wanted done and what my expectations were.
All right, so we're finally done. We're in the building. Everything is great. I really love the space. Like I said, the guys who built the building, the subcontractor crew was excellent. And then the, the company I hired to do the concrete and the retaining walls and stuff were also really super professional. So no complaints there. Uh, all I could say is if you're gonna do a project like this is be prepared for it to take way longer than you think it's gonna take and obviously cost more than you think it's gonna cost. Now I could do a whole cost breakdown on this project at some point, but to, to sum it all up, this project cost about $150,000. I had originally budgeted $75,000 for this project and it just quickly got out of hand. And one thing I really underestimated was how much dirt work costs. Moving dirt, having dirt delivered, the machines it takes to move the dirt, the maintenance on all of them. Uh, it's, it was just, it really caught me by surprise. And so, you know, this whole thing has been a learning process and I'm sure that years down the road, I'll say, well, you know, it was all worth it. But at the time of doing it, it really hurts the wallet. So just be prepared for anything like that. And also I had said this earlier in the video, like if you're gonna tackle something like this alone, you have to have some kind of heavy machinery uh, access to it at all times. Because you never know when like a load of dirt is gonna be delivered or you're gonna have to pick something up or move something across the yard. And for too long, I tried to do this stuff by myself. And you just spend hours trying to engineer some way to come up, you know, to, to, to move the thing when really it should take like five minutes. So don't underestimate that part of it either. Just build it into your budget, some kind of a tractor or a skid steer or, or whatever, you're gonna need it. Another thing that I was kind of surprised about in the whole process was there was no like general contractor ever I was the general contractor. I was the one coordinating everything. Maybe I was asking the wrong questions and maybe people didn't take me seriously enough, but like I kind of figured when you call up these places and they have a picture of a building like this that it's gonna be turnkey. Like, oh yeah, well, that's the price. Uh, whatever the price is on the flyer, that's what it's gonna be. No, that's not even close because you still have all the earthwork, the concrete, the electric, et cetera, et cetera. That's just one of the things I wish these building companies could be a little bit more transparent with to the homeowner up front. You know, if you want, a, if you want the building as pictured, we can provide this general contractor service that will, you know, do the whole thing soup to nuts. Because it's, and, and, and forget even the door, God, the permit, the permitting process. I, I can't even tell you the red tape I had to go through with the county. And a lot of it, was just really simple stuff that I just didn't know about. And it would hold up the process for months. I'll give you an example. Uh, in this building, I wanted the height to be tall enough to accommodate a lift. So the county that I live in, they have a restriction on height. 15 feet tall is the limit, fine. Well, what I didn't realize, I had to, I, I ended up applying for a variance because this building to the layman, which is me, is taller than 15 feet at the peak of the roof. It ends up being, like when we did the math or something, it was like 18 feet, so I'm a couple feet off. But what I don't realize is that the definition of peak of the roof is actually the average between the top of the, the header for the garage and then the peak. That's the actual defined height of the roof. So after months of wasting the county's time trying to file for a variance and having to get a, a hearing date and all this stuff, I finally get somebody on the phone who knows what they're talking about and they're like, wait, what do you want to do? And after I explain it to them, they say, oh, you don't need a, you don't need a variance for that. You're good to go. So, I mean, it's just like little things like this that I wish, it, and at the very least, if they weren't going to provide any kind of service, maybe they could have just had some kind of like education process up front because a lot of time was wasted just waiting for things to happen that could have been in motion sooner you know, uh, same thing with that leveling crap. I waited 10 weeks. The guy comes out, says we're good to go. I wait 10 weeks only for them to uh, tell me that we're at a level. Like if I had had a little bit more information, I would have been handling that the entire time so that when the day they showed up, we would have just built the building.
But I suppose that's life, you know, that's like anything. Uh, you know, the first time you do it, it's gonna be messy and it's gonna be not what you think it's gonna be. And of course it's gonna cost more than you think it's gonna cost. And I suppose I could have paid somebody a lot of money up front to handle all of my problems, but then I wouldn't have learned anything. So I guess it just depends on what kind of person you are. Like I'm a really stubborn person who wants stuff done and I want it done now. And we got it done. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm sitting in this barn on a concrete floor, looking around at all the vehicles that I have and thinking about all the projects that I'm going to do. And I will enjoy this space for years to come. And I hope this video inspires uh, you guys out there, if you are thinking about building a building, to get creative and start thinking about you know, what your layout's going to look like. And I, I just hope that maybe somebody can learn from some of my mistakes. Uh, really, the only way to do it is to just get out there and do it. So, you know, good luck to you guys. Uh, enjoy the process, as frustrating as it can be. Make some friends along the way, buy a tractor, and uh, get out there and build something. All right, thanks for checking it out. See you around.